Family members are pressing for more action following an outbreak at Donovan State Prison. What they say needs to happen as COVID spreads to hundreds of inmates. Plus, a local business owner hit hard by the pandemic desperately now searching for a path forward after a devastating break in. A local nurse battling an aggressive breast cancer reflects on her journey. In our season of hope, she shares her resilience and strength and her effort to find happiness. ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. Just one month before he was due to report to prison, former East County Congressman Duncan Hunter has been pardoned by President Trump. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Pena. And I'm Steve Atkinson. President Trump announced the pardon just late this afternoon. He also pardoned another former Congressman, Chris Collins, who is now in prison for wire fraud and lying to the FBI. Late last year, Hunter pleaded guilty to stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign donations for his own personal use. Congressman Darrell Issa, who succeeded Hunter in the House, said in a statement, quote, I'm pleased that all of the Hunter family can spend this Christmas together with a fresh outlook on life. Carl DeMaio, who ran against Issa in the primary, wasn't as pleased in a statement that he said he disagreed with the pardon and that, quote, politicians should be held accountable for following the laws that all of U.S. citizens have to follow. No exemptions. Also tonight, COVID-19 has hit the U.S. in three ever worsening spikes. As the coverage of outbreaks focuses on restaurants and other businesses, one of the worst outbreaks in San Diego is at Donovan State Prison. RJD has failed, you know, to do their part in taking care of our loved ones. Family members with loved ones incarcerated at Donovan say they're scared. And tonight, our ABC 10 News reporter Adam Mercusen shows us how they're calling on the state to either protect their loved ones or release them. My husband is, you know, um, he has an underlying condition, stage four cirrhosis. I would hate for him to pass away because of COVID. Frustration, anger, fear, just some of the emotions Mary Estrada is feeling. Her husband, Robert, is an inmate at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility. He called me back on the 18th to let me know that he had tested positive for COVID. That was the last time Mary's heard from him. I'm about to cry. It's just, um, this is so disheartening, you know. The number of cases at the facility has exploded this month. Numbers from the state show there are 600 active cases in custody. That's more than 16% of the prison's current population. Of the confirmed cases, 448 of them are new in the past 14 days. The CDCR says they are immediately responding with coordinated efforts around testing and contact tracing, along with isolation and quarantine measures to migrate the spread. But it's not just the prison with concerning numbers. Jails and prisons and detention centers, these are going to be hot spots uh, for, for rapid transmission. Bartis Vakili is a senior staff attorney for the ACLU Foundation of San Diego and Imperial Counties. This week, the organization filed a California Public Records Act request looking for information on the surge of COVID-19 cases in San Diego County jails. The ACLU says the number of active COVID-19 cases at county jails has more than doubled from the end of November to the end of last week. For everybody's good, for everybody's safety. Uh, we're hoping for a very quick and rapid reduction in the populations of these, of these facilities. Back at the prison, Mary says families are worried. and know the first COVID-related death at the facility happened Monday. They need to release. Release them. Adam Rakusen, ABC 10 News. The state numbers also show 179 active cases with employees at Donovan. Corrections officials say four gyms at the facility are being used to isolate positive patients from others. San Diego's 14 day rolling average for positive COVID cases is now inching closer to 10% as more new cases push it higher than ever before. There were more than 2300 new cases reported today that now brings our pandemic total to more than 132,000. After reporting 28 more deaths, the county now says more than 1300 San Diegans have died from this virus. And with cases still surging, you can track the very latest COVID developments with the ABC 10 News app. You can find it free in the App Store. More than 30,000 SDG&E customers may lose their power in the coming days. Today, the utility warned of potential public safety shutoffs as it prepares for a fire weather watch set to take effect tomorrow morning. And our meteorologist Angelica Campos is tracking those conditions tonight and joins us live. Hi, Angelica. 
Hi, Lindsay. Sadly, another week and we are yet again tracking Sinana winds and a red flag warning. The winds are already starting to make that shift in some parts of the county, including our deserts like Borrego Springs and Ramona, Mount Laguna, where the winds are mainly onshore with winds out of the south for coastal communities. So here's a red flag warning. It will start tomorrow at 8 a.m. And we are expecting the winds to increase throughout the course of the day on Wednesday, most likely getting way stronger by the afternoon when we expect the winds to to peak into the evening winds could range from 40 to or wind gust could range from 40 to over 50 miles per hour and of course it's going to dry out the atmosphere creating those critical fire conditions there's going to be even more changes there's also the chance for rain in the forecast we'll have much more in our seven day angelica thank you a judge is allowing the public to know the name of the north county teenager accused of killing a woman on a carlsbad trail 17-year-old Aloha Badet denied the allegations in court today. And as our ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer Kastner learned, detectives do have surveillance video of him leaving the crime scene. New surveillance images were revealed in a virtual court hearing Tuesday for the teen suspected of stabbing Lisa Thorborg on Hosgrove Trail in Carlsbad in November. The judge said 17-year-old Haloa Bodet's name could be revealed, but his face must be blurred. The prosecution painted him as a rule breaker. A photo of the teen appearing on a missing person alert earlier this year in Hawaii, where prosecutors said he used to live and ran away from school. Detectives said this surveillance camera image shows him running barefoot on the street away from the park at 11.25 a.m the day Thorborg died. We feel that she was, um, or she died at about 11, 10 a.m. So that's about 15 minutes after. Other surveillance camera images captured the teen on the same trail in the days after the murder. He's walking on the same trail. Um, where the victim was found. Detectives said a few days later he was arrested for prowling on the trail and once taken into custody, a sample of his DNA was taken, which matched the male DNA found on the victim's shorts. Detectives also said a pair of flip-flops that were believed to be his were discovered near Thorborg. His defense attorney argued that Thorborg may have picked up those sandals, which is how she got his DNA on her. You don't know if the decedent ever picked up those flip-flops, do you? No. So the decedent could have picked up that pair of flip-flops, correct? The teen's attorney said there's no motive for a murder. His grandmother told the judge he has no history of violence. The judge decided the case can move forward. Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. A driver accused in a deadly hit and run crash in Fallbrook says he didn't do it. Pasquale Pasquale was arrested three days after the December 10th crash that killed 60 year old Simone Conley. CHP officers say that Pasquale hit Conley while she was out walking with her husband, then just took off. She died at the scene. Surveillance video captured a black pickup truck driving away from the area. Investigators say that Pasquale sold the truck involved in the crash before he was arrested. Today, a judge increased his bail, calling Pasquale a flight risk. A 75 year old man charged in a 51 year old murder in City Heights has pleaded not guilty to the crime. John Sipos appeared before a judge for the first time since his arrest today. San Diego police say DNA evidence tied Sipos to the murder of Mary Scott. They say he broke into her home in November 1969, raped and strangled her. He remains in jail on $3 million bond until his next hearing in February. Yeah, they cleaned us out. Yeah, definitely a punch to the gut. A college area business owner is at a loss after burglars broke into her shuttered salon. As ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen explains, the holiday surprise could be crippling for a salon barely hanging on. Just before six on Sunday morning, video shows someone at the door of the closed up Do Beauty Boutique on El Cajon Boulevard. You can hear the door being pried open for several minutes before the burglar lets himself in. Another intruder soon follows. Flashlights shining, they go shopping for more than 20 minutes before ripping down the camera. Gut wrenching, like just trying not to cry. Tiffany Schaff, who opened the salon three years ago, sent us video of the mess they left behind. They cleaned us out. Definitely a punch to the gut. Shelves full of retail hair products gone, along with tools of the trade, flat irons, blow dryers, scissors. The thieves even took drawers to carry out their haul. The total loss, including property damage. They actually busted my door frame. Now at $3,000 and climbing. Schaff has insurance, but even the deductible is a hardship. It has been very trying. It's definitely been 
month to month situation on whether or not will continue. The salon now in its third shutdown of the pandemic yearly revenues down about 75%. We're bleeding out our pocket. We're talking, there's $100 left in the salon account, so, and we've cleared my savings. An emotional shove. I just keep persevering, and um, I'm gonna try to do that the best I can. Vows to fight to keep her salon open, but it's getting tougher every day, and this break-in just dealt her even more pain. At what point do we continue to, you know, take a hit on a personal level for a business, but it's also my dream. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News. It's so hard to watch. Anyone with information on this case is asked to call Crime Stoppers. A GoFundMe campaign has also been set up to help the salon recover. There is a link on our homepage.